know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. The power of God's mercy. The Lord said to me, there is a huge difference between the way that he dealt with King David and the way he dealt with King Saul. King David did more wrong things than King Saul. But David made it and Saul didn't make it. And he said to me something really powerful. I didn't even get to write it down. He said, when Saul was asked about his issues, he justified himself. Say justified. Say justified. Okay? He justified himself. Right? Write that down. He blamed other people. Okay? Watch this. And the Lord said, if you justify yourself, I will use justice on you. I've never heard that before, but it makes so much sense. It means you are saying, I want God to deal with me according to justice. And he said, now when David did something wrong, he never justified himself. He always begged God for mercy. He begged God for mercy. This is going to change your prayer life. Hallelujah. Say mercy, Lord. Say it again. Say mercy, Lord. Say I need God's mercy more than I need his justice. He is a just God, but he's also a merciful God. Hallelujah. You can never know enough or do enough to fully qualify for God's blessing. There are always gaps in your knowledge. And it is mercy that covers those gaps. It is mercy that covers those gaps. He also said to me, he said, my principles, they take time to kick in. Hello? So while you are learning the principles and starting to do the principles, you still need my mercy to cover the gap. Say, I need mercy. Say it again. Say, I need mercy. He said, you must show mercy to people so that I show mercy to you. Psalm 102, verse number 13. The Bible says, you will arise and have mercy on Zion. Somebody said the church needs mercy. We have in the past watered down the mercy message because we thought mercy was for people who are unsaved so that by mercy they are saved. Yes, that's one aspect of mercy. But when you are now in Zion, you still need mercy. So mercy is not just for the sinner. Mercy is actually needed more for the saints. Why are the mercies of God new every morning? Because we use them up daily. His mercies are new every morning. Lamentations 3, verse number 23 says, His mercies are what? Are new every morning. Somebody say, every morning, His mercies are new. Go back to Psalm 102, verse 13. He says, You will arise and have what? Mercy on Zion. Then he gives us the reason why. For the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. In other words, watch this. You need mercy because it's your time to be blessed. So your time, your season, your kairos moment can come. But without mercy, you will miss it. So we've been crying out to God. It's my time. It's my season. But we've missed many seasons. We've missed many times because we didn't factor in mercy. Why do I need mercy when it's my time? I would have thought if it's my time, it's my time. 
I need mercy when it is my time because when it is my time, there are voices that are speaking and saying he must not make it. And they are giving valid, solid reasons why I shouldn't make it. I'll prove it to you. Hosea 7.1 When I would have healed Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim was brought up. They were quiet about it until the said time. Listen, the government has a file on you. Hello? When you want to make noise, that's when they bring out the file. Oh, I wish somebody understood my example. There are things you thought you got away with. They are just filed. They are filed for the time that you say, this is my time. I say, uh -huh, this is your time. This is your file. When you want to get married is when the issue of your abortion is brought up. When you have no boyfriend, no one talks about it. When your business wants to win a tender, that's when they bring up the fact that there are gaps. You don't have a tax clearance. But when you are busy making the proposals, no one talks about it. You will arise, someone or two. Oh, God, help me. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time, the appointed time has come. This answered so many questions in my life. Why I've missed so many set times. I mean, prophetic words were said. This is your season. This is your time. I see God doing this. I see God doing that. But God didn't do it because I didn't ask for mercy. Because now you will know that when you get an opportunity, you, you, you immediately, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a chain. Immediately you get on your knees and you start to cry for mercy. And you say, Lord, if there's no mercy, I will miss this opportunity again. There are too many things that have gone wrong in your background. Listen to what God said. He said, favor is impossible without mercy. That's the opening statement of our book. Favor is impossible without mercy. You can't even begin to talk of God's favor if mercy has not gone ahead. No matter how many times you shout favor in the realm of the spirit, if mercy is not released, you will not experience the favor. Mercy is God's divine system to bail men out of trouble. It's a system in the kingdom. Being a Christian does not guarantee you success. You didn't get that. <laughs> being a Christian, being saved, does not guarantee you success. And I said, look at how many Christian losers they are. It's not because they are not saved. It's not because God does not love them. Listen to this. It's because they don't understand the mysteries in the kingdom. And mercy is a mystery. It's a bailout system for men to get men out of trouble. When every other prayer has failed, try the prayer of mercy. It never fails. For the Bible says his mercies never fail. Mercy is God's system to exempt men from the punishment they deserve for their sins. Personal. And for their iniquities, the sins of the forefathers. Our fathers have sinned and are no more. But we bear the iniquities. Lamentations 5 verse 7. So mercy is a bailout system from these issues of the sins of the forefathers. Mercy is part of God's character of love. Rich, what did God say about David? He said, David is a man after my own heart. I didn't understand that statement until today. He said, David is a man after my own heart. What does he mean? David understood the mystery of mercy. Mercy is the heart of God. That's what the heart of God is. It's just mercy. Mercy is powerful. While your enemies are waiting for you to be destroyed, mercy will rescue you. They are anticipating your destruction, but mercy comes and rescues you.
Watch what mercy does. It's so powerful. Not only does it rescue you, at the same time it's rescuing you, it's elevating you. So when they were anticipating your downfall, actually you are rising. That's why the Bible says when they say there's a downsetting, you will say there's an uprising. Your father was a herbalist. And according to the law, you are supposed to be punished up to the 10th generation. But because of mercy, you still make it. It is the mercy of God that rescues a drunkard from an accident that is supposed to legally kill him. But mercy preserves him. Mercy preserves him. If God gave you a husband you deserve, the one you deserve, you'd be finished. You can never be good enough to get a good man. By mercy, you overmarry. By mercy, you overmarry. You get somebody who's better than you. The real you. Not the marketing you. The real you. If you are supposed to get a wife, you, a wife you deserve, we are supposed to go into the avenues, into the red light district, and collect one who has slept with as many men as you have slept with women. Then that is the one you deserve. But by mercy, God can give you a virgin. You don't understand the message on mercy. You don't understand the message on mercy. If we are to... That, I mean, you know the real deal. Stop pretending. You know the real deal. I don't deserve this. I don't. Uh, you are talking of deserving. If God was to deal with your finances according to what you deserve, with the number of tithes you have eaten, notwithstanding your forefathers, what they also ate, if God was to deal with you according to justice, you would never even have a bond, not you. Until Jesus comes, you're, you're, you're not qualified. I have maybe 30 newspaper articles. I'll show, I'll show them to you on Sunday in my demonstration. About 30 newspaper articles about myself and my wife. Miracles. People coming out of wheelchairs. Blind eyes being opened. I'll show you the articles. They're there. I mean, coming out in the newspaper. I, raising the dead. Coming out in H Metro. And the Lord said to me, it is this that I have decided to publish about you because of mercy. Not because you are so anointed. He says you think you study so much. You think you fast so much that you can raise the dead. There are people who fast more than you. There are people who study more than you. That I don't entrust with the revelation. I entrust you with. So from today, know that it's not you. It is my mercy. It humbled me afresh. Tears began to well in my eyes. And I began to know that because of the foolishness I have done, God chose not to publish the foolishness. But he rather chose to publish what the mercy produced. Am I talking to somebody here? There are so many things that God has covered up for you. By his mercy, he covered up for you. People don't even know that things he covered for you. He said, all oh, those people who you see that you read about in the newspapers, negative things, it is because I did not show mercy. Uh, it's not that you have not done what they have done. It's not that you have not done what they've... Listen, there are things that people have done that you read about. Pride and arrogance disqualify you from God's mercy. You are not a candidate for God's mercy when you are arrogant and proud. When no one can correct you. When no one can tell you, don't do this. Don't go to that. Don't go back to it. When no one can tell you, you are disqualified from God's mercy. And when God's mercy is taken out of the equation, the next thing that's coming is judgment. Oh, we need his mercy. We need his mercy. God, listen to this. God in his infinite wisdom factored in mercy in his dealings with men. Because though what establishes his throne is righteousness and what? And justice. That, that's the basis of his throne. So if you are to deal with men according to the establishment of his throne, righteousness and judgment we would be finished. So in his infinite wisdom, he says, if I deal with these ones, according to who I really am, they'll be finished. So let me give them a bailout system. Let me factor in what? Mercy. 
instead of just using judgment and righteousness. Because if God was to deal with you according to the letter, that's why he says the letter killeth. If he deals with us according to, to the Ten Commandments, you, 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 nine of them, you have broken them. Oh, Lord, thank you for your mercy. 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 He said, your forefathers, they called on the dead. They called on the dead. Why not Zim, your forefathers? Some of you, your family are still going to Nanga, consulting evil spirits. He says, you need his mercy. For your life to make sense and make progress, for your children to make sense and make progress, for your business to thrive, for your church to thrive, for your career to make sense, you need to invoke the mercies of God. Listen to what God said to me. He said the worst witchcraft that can ever happen to you is for somebody to bewitch you in a way that will make you unable to access God's mercy. That is the worst witchcraft. It's in the Bible. They spoke of David and said, there is no help for him in God. Ay, ay, ay. It was an invocation of witchcraft. So you don't get any mercy from God. But David vetoed that. He said, but you, O oh Lord, are my shield, my glory and the lift of my head. So they bewitch you and say there's no help for you. You better veto that, I'm telling you. Because in the realm of the spirit, they are speaking and saying there's no help for you. There's no mercy for you. The worst witchcraft is to stop you from getting the mercies of God. Say mercy, Lord. He says in the Bible, if we do not for the mercies of God, we would have been consumed. There's a devil waiting to consume you. And you can only be rescued by mercy. Stop waving your CV and your education and begin to invoke mercy. Mercy. You don't know enough business principles to do business. You, 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 you. And even if you went to business school, business school does not work in Zimbabwe because they, they are always changing the legislation. The goalposts are always shifting. What is legal today in Zimbabwe is not necessarily legal tomorrow. You can have foreign currency on you. It's legal. Overnight. When you wake up tomorrow, it's illegal. You can wake up a criminal. We can't operate in Zimbabwe without the mercies of God. Listen to this. Mercy provokes the help of God regardless that you have not satisfied the conditions. You have not satisfied the conditions for divine assistance, but mercy still activates the help of God. God says, you know what? Let me just help him anyway. But it's not automatic. You have to understand the mystery of mercy. You have to understand what I'm teaching you. <laughs> mercy is what I need to operate in life while I am still working out the principles in the kingdom. Meanwhile, I need mercy. Mercy can triumph over judgment any day, any time. So there are people who you judge. But you don't know that in the secret place they are lying flat on their belly and all they are saying is mercy Lord mercy Lord please don't deal with me according to my foolishness if you deal with me according to my foolishness I'll be finished deal with me according to your mercy and your tender loving kindness when you sin beg God for mercy before judgment prevails so you need to, to beg for mercy urgently Beg for mercy. Stop giving excuses for your wrongdoings. Stop blaming other people. Start begging for mercy. Mercy is how we rescue the future of our children from ruin because of our personal weaknesses and limitations. Solomon did a lot of nonsense. And many times God wanted to deal with Solomon. And listen to what God said to Solomon. He said, Solomon, Solomon, Solomon. If it were not for your father David... It means that David prayed mercy prayers for Solomon ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pray for your children's future and begin to factor in mercy into the future of your children. Because if God deals with your children according to your foolishness and then compounded with their foolishness, your children, your name will be obliterated out of the future. You know your child. And the are when you sin, God gives you over to your enemies. This is a serious revelation. He gives you to, to, to over to your enemies. And your enemies begin to prevail against you. So what do you do? You beg for mercy before your next battle. Before your next meeting, beg for mercy. Because there are things at play working against you. 
Before your next business phone call, beg for mercy. When I fall, I shall rise again because of mercy. Listen to what David said. He says, my enemies rejoice not over me, for when I fall, I shall rise again. Why was he so sure? Because he was sure because of God's mercies. He was sure he would rise again because of God's mercies. Oh, mercy is powerful. Mercy is powerful. And the Lord said to me, wherever you see the blood of Jesus, that is my mercy flowing towards you. Hallelujah. So you need to activate God's mercies on the basis of the blood of Jesus. David did everything you can think of wrong. But David, he still thrived because of mercy. I mean, if you and I were God, we, we, we would have changed, somewhere along the line, we would have changed our minds about Jesus being called the son of David. The son of an adulterer. The son of a murderer. Jesus. You would have changed your mind. It was God's mercy that today we still call Jesus the son of David. Hallelujah. And can you imagine? I mean, listen, this, this, this really is ministering to me. That, you know, I remember the instance that... Uh, uh, um, David killed Bathsheba's husband. I like to call it Bathsheba's husband. It's a reminder. And then Bathsheba was pregnant. This is the whole issue was because she was pregnant. So and 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 he didn't want people to know that the or the husband to then ask to go Hello. Watch this. The child died as proof that God was not happy with this situation. The child died. Listen to this. After that, David begged for God's mercy. I would have thought he would send Bathsheba away and say, Bathsheba, listen, you are trouble. You need to go. No, he didn't stop. They birthed Solomon. <laughs> Solomon became king. Mercy does not only rescue you, it elevates you. They still birthed a king in that foolishness. That's how powerful mercy is, Reg. While people were putting their hands on their hips and saying, this is nonsense. By the time when God says that one is the next king. <laughs> You don't understand mercy. You don't understand mercy. You are looking at me. You are looking at my foolishness. You have not factored in mercy. You have not factored in mercy. Many people judge you. They have not factored in mercy. People don't understand. Apostle, why do you allow people to do this to you? And you just still embrace them. I'm seeding mercy. Because I know myself. You don't know me. You, you, you don't know me. You know the same ones. You don't know me. Me, I know me. So I'm going to go ahead and show mercy. Because tomorrow I'll need it. I'm going to go ahead and sow a seed of mercy. Because tomorrow I will need the mercy. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? This, if you take this teaching, it will completely change everything. It will change the way you do things. It will change the way you judge people. It will change the way that you just do things in life. It will change the way you pray. Instead of all this, God, why? God, how far? Hey, God, hey. By now, I would have thought, hey, I'm just going to say, oh, no, no, no. You stop all that nonsense and just, most of the time, you'll be saying, mercy. Mercy. Dikafunga matumbe mnamato. Arikumba kwa maiwangu. Ndikafunga nganga. Zaka ya visitiru. Wanema zitate guru angu. Ndikafunga ma sacrifice. E mombe. Akapua kuna diabrosi. Ne ama zangu. Ndikafunga ngozi. Irumuri medu. Apa na mabudiriro andinga ite. Kana pasi na nyasha. Don't deceive yourself. Don't deceive yourself. You can never be a prayer warrior enough to pray through all the blessings that you want. And listen to what the Lord said to me. It was so profound. He said, son, even if you were to be told one by one that things that your forefathers did, the people will always leave something out. There will always be something that you don't know. That's the thing you cover by mercy, not by prayer points. Lord, we need your mercy. Mercy is so powerful. Watch this, I'm almost done. Mercy is so powerful that the Canaanite woman who did not qualify for Jesus' attention got the attention of Jesus before it was time. Because according to the law, she was supposed to wait for Jesus to go to the cross and reconcile non-Jewish people with God. Then they qualify for the blessing, but it was not yet time. So she got a blessing before time by mercy. That Canaanite woman by mercy rescued the life of a child. 
Moses, a murderer, became a leader. He led the children of God out of Israel. He was chosen to be a leader, a murderer. While he was leading, there were people talking about his murders. But he was still leading. While they are talking about you and the mistakes you made, you are still moving forward. They are complaining you buy another car. They are complaining you buy another house. They are complaining you buy another deal. You do another deal. They are complaining you buy another hospital. They are complaining, but you are still succeeding. And they don't understand. I want to understand. And I want to understand. Hey, I'm okay. Best sermon ever. I'm telling you the truth. I have mercy. I have mercy. Paul the apostle, he was a Christian killer. And he was not going to stop. Oh. Jesus had to have a serious board meeting with him on the road to Damascus and say, Paul, this is nonsense. You need to stop this. He was actually on his way to Damascus to kill more Christians. And Jesus met with him and says, this must stop. When he had that meeting, people were not there. When you were praying last night, people were not there. They know what you did yesterday, but they don't know what you did last night. They don't know the prayer you prayed last night. So the disciples, because the disciples were not there on the road to Damascus, when Paul met up, Saul met up with Jesus, they were not there. So when God began to raise him and say, this is the next voice, they began to manifest. <laughs> and they said, this is nonsense. They, it's like they were now telling God, do you not know this information? Now you are trusting him with things that are, 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 are unlawful to be uttered. You are giving him revelation. He's writing two-thirds of the New Testament. This boy. And that's what people do. They, it's like they go to God and say, you don't know. Let us tell you about him. And God says, shut up. My messes are new every morning. You don't know anything. What you know is limited. The apostle Paul, great miracles, greater than the ones that walked with Jesus. That's why many people have a problem with new people in the kingdom being blessed. They have a problem with it because they don't understand the mercy message. They don't understand that these people are not prospering because of principles. By mercy, Solomon, a bastard, became a king. The wealthiest king to have ever lived to date. By mercy, by mercy, listen to me. By mercy, a criminal at the cross, who was on the cross beside Jesus. Jesus said, because he begged for mercy, Jesus said to him, this day you shall be with me in paradise. While the other one was justifying, speaking nonsense, the other one on the other side of Jesus, he was begging for mercy. Son of David, have mercy on me. Please, I'm dying on a cross. That means I have a one-way ticket to hell. But by mercy, he made it to heaven in one day. One prayer took him to heaven. And it vetoed all the nonsense he did. Can you imagine the power of mercy? It can obliterate every sin you've ever sinned. Mercy, the mercies of God. Say by mercy, I will get things I don't deserve. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Mercy is a benefit in the kingdom that we have not used. Mercy will always give you more than what you deserve. Mercy will give you more than what you qualify for. Raise your hands to heaven. Begin to talk to God. Just talk to God about the people who have wronged you. And you were not willing to let them go. But based on what you have learned today, you are making a decision to forgive. I want you to do that right now. Right now. This is so important because God will show mercy to the merciful. I want you to have mercy on everyone who has ever wronged you. We ever wronged you. It doesn't matter what they did. It doesn't matter what they did to you. You need to let it go. Because if you don't let it go, you don't qualify for God's mercy. You don't qualify for God's mercy. And you don't keep bringing it up. Because a person who has forgiven does not keep bringing it up. We know that the grass withers and the flower fades, but your word is eternal. 